Hello, and welcome to Summer Scams. This is the show where we tackle all your summertime woes. My name's Jimmy, and on today's festival special, we're going to be testing your raincoats, tackling your ticket scams, and answering your questions and queries. But first, we're going to go over to Rachel in the summer shop. Hey, Rachel, how you doing? Hi, Jim Bob. Right, today, guys, I'm in the summer shop, and I'll be looking at the five most complained about cosmetics for a festival. These are the products that you might want to be wary of this summer. And backstage, I believe John is expecting a very exciting guest. That's right. I'm here ready and waiting at the end of the show for a very special acoustic performance from a musician of the summer. Don't forget, you can tweet in throughout the show at SummerScan, hashtag festival special. I'll be reading some out at the end of the show. So in last week's show, we were talking about your holiday dramas, everything from lost luggage to dodgy hotels. And one of the main issues that got you riled was ticket scams. But this problem doesn't just happen when you're going abroad. We've been inundated with your emails and tweets about festival ticket scams, so we decided to investigate a little further. Melvin Benn, Managing Director of Festival Republic, who organises events such as the Reading and Leeds and Latitude Festivals, is here to speak to us now. Mr Benn, what do you have to say about the resale of festival tickets? Hi, Jimmy, and thank you. Well, actually, I'm very disappointed that the government isn't taking any action over the resale of music tickets like it has done for the London Olympics. And I'm afraid that the decision not to regulate this market has left a very big problem with us. I know the government has said it has no intention of regulating the websites. Yes, and I do feel that it's just one rule for one thing and one rule for another. The Culture Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, seems to believe, believe that it's not the government's problem, but it's the industry's problem. Well, we have got a statement from the government which does claim, we'll show you the letter, it's here, and they say that high prices charged by touts may irritate some people, but they do have the option of walking away. They do sympathise with fans who feel they're being priced out of certain events by secondary sellers, and would like to see the introduction of tighter operating practices by primary ticket distributors. Unless there's a demonstrable market failure, this is not a case for government action. But in the meanwhile, ticket fraud expert Reg Walker says the key is to check the site out before clicking buy. It says people should do their homework. You should be looking for a UK registered office, a UK registered company, a UK phone number and a VT registration number. Look for things you can verify. And we will hear more from Mr Ben later on the show, so please stay with us. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you. Now, one of the most crucial items when going to a festival in the great British outdoors is obviously going to be something to keep you dry. So Johnny and I have been rigorously testing a selection of raincoats to see if they do live up to their claims. Hey, and welcome to our testing tent. You know there's a lot to think about when planning for summer festivals. Because English weather is unreliable, we're going to need a very good raincoat to make sure that you don't get wet whilst you're camping. So, we've received a few tweets today claiming that even the top sports brands aren't keeping you dry at festivals. So me and Johnny here today are going to test some out for you and see what keeps you dry. Okay, Johnny, can you give me a hand with this? Yeah. Right. Hello. How you doing? I'm all right, a bit tired. Anyway, let's crack on. While I dance some music, we're going to be testing out some of the raincoats and we are going to be spraying with a hose. All right. Yeah. Okay, so the first one we've got is the waterproof sports jacket, which is really popular amongst you. Can we start with that one? Thank with that you. One then we've got the famous poncho, which we see with festival goes every year. Is this one. And then finally, we've got the Top Sports branded one, which claims it can uh, withstand all weather conditions. We'll give that one a go as well. There we go. Okay, well, you get suited up and uh, I'll go get started. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think we, we have to come to a conclusion here. Uh, the sports jacket is the winner. Uh, we came to a compromise between the three. And the reasons behind that is because it's light, it's very warm, and it's very easily uh, packable into your bag. Don't okay. forget, you can dance in it. It's good dancing. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we hope we helped you choose the right gear for your festival. And thanks for watching the Jimmy. There you go. Yeah, next week we're going to be looking at inflatables and testing them in the North Sea. Hope you have fun this week. Back to the studio, Jim.
people that go into a festival, you may be too excited to think very carefully about what you're packing, just as long as you can fit it all in. Well, with the help here of my lovely assistant, Johnny, you, we're going to help you guys learn from the mistakes of other festival goers. We've had so many tweets, so we've chosen the five highest trending products, and we're going to be putting some of their claims to the test. First, we have this dry shampoo from Bataz, which is Emily from Newcastle scratching her head for an answer. She's written in saying, this dry shampoo is a nightmare, my sensitive scalp. I've been itching for two days. Bataz have said, we apologise for any discomfort. We're currently developing a sensitive line of products. They've also refunded Emily the full price of a purchase, which is good. Mm -hmm. Next, we have this new deodorant from Shaw, who claim it won't let you down, but Catherine has tweeted in saying differently. She said, Shaw deodorant didn't make me feel any fresher. Within 20 minutes, it was as if I hadn't used any at all. Not very not good. good. Shaw have also apologised and offered a full refund. We've also heard from many of you about this Carrick's hand sanitizer, which you say leaves hands sticky and smell of alcohol for hours and doesn't even clean them properly. So come on, Rachel, stick your hands out. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Uh, well, it's very wet and it's drying really sticky and smell that. Oh, that's it not good. It stinks yeah. of alcohol. Well, Carex, Care sorry, so far have been unavailable to comment. So for now, we'd say that you stay clear of this particular brand and we'll be sure to keep you updated if we hear anything back. Yep. And finally, we have a video message from Claire in Manchester who tried out salt and sun cream, which claimed to be fat 30 on the bottle. Hello, Claire. Hey, okay, tell us what's happened with this product. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Rachel. Um, Hi. Well, I used this product when I went to Scotland on holiday. Um, I, obviously, I didn't realise it was going to be so hot. Um, but on the bottle, it claimed to be factor 30. However, I still got um, quite bad sunburn. Um, and I just want to know the reasons why, really. So you think we're falsely claiming to be factor 30? Well, let's see what they have to say for themselves. On the other line, we have Steve Tisdale, the CEO of Saltan. Steve, what have you got to say about this? We take customer dissatisfaction very seriously, and we are very sorry that Claire had this experience with our product. All our products are tested to the highest standards, and we have never had a problem like this before. We suggest that she uses a stronger factor for next time, but we will, of course, compensate Claire for the price of the product and offer 10% off the next purchase. Is that on our right hand to be, Claire? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Well, I think that's another successful summer shop. Yeah. So it seems to be a common complaint amongst festival goers that the price of food is far too high. We've been tweeted by Mike Hutchinson, who claims that he paid £200 for his ticket and £8 for a burger. This is unacceptable. So we've got Melvin Ben here again to explain why the prices are so high. Hey, Melvin. You right? Hi again, Jimmy. You know uh, that uh, festivals, they're not easy to run and not, ex not cheap to run either. Yeah. And uh, the vendors have, have to pay for their stalls, so therefore they have to increase their prices in order to cover their costs. And uh, unfortunately, organic stalls can be even more expensive. So what are you doing for people who can't afford to pay £8 for a burger? Surely it's a bit dangerous to have people starving at your festivals. That's right, Jimmy. That's why we've just introduced the Beer and Bap Scheme. And under this scheme, every weekend ticket holder will get a free can of beer and a free breakfast bat for every day of their stay. They can redeem their vouchers at special locations for a bacon and sausage bat or for the vegetarian scrambled egg and mushroom. OK, now what about the drinks? Yes, everyone will get, when they come in, a plastic bag containing three bottles, three cans of beer or three cans of soft drink. And uh, what's even better is that the bag is a recycling bag. So they can fill that with empty cans and get even more money for even more beer. Okay. Because I know that it's not easy at the moment for students and people with not much money, so I just want to give something back. It's a really good resolution to that. I'm sure the viewers at home will really be happy. I'm really glad that you came in today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jimmy. Right. And uh, if you have any problems with this, uh, we're gonna, uh, if you want to take control and bring your own food, here's a couple of handy tips, OK? Hello there, guys, and welcome to this week's 60 Second Tips. So as you know, every week my tips are quick, simple and fast. So for breakfast we have a selection of tins of beans and spaghetti. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is try and put a can opener. See, it's taking a bit too much time, it's not going in. And who takes these festivals anyway? <laughs> Let's move on to what we decided.
guys, is a little tip for your cold pizza cravings, is cook it before you go, then put it in a nice little Tupperware box like this. But we obviously have so much more food that you could take to a festival with you, but my 60 seconds is unfortunately up. So for more tips, visit our website. But for now, back to the studio, guys. And we've just been told that Finn Jackson has arrived in the studio, so let's see if Johnny has caught up with him. Yeah, I'm here with Finn now, who's going to be answering a few of our questions for us. First, from Maxim Peasley. He says he's been looking for a new acoustic guitar, but it doesn't have much to spend. Why are some acoustic guitars much more expensive than others? Well, there's lots of things to take into consideration there. First of all would probably be if the guitar's hand-built or not. Second of all would be the, the woods used. This one here is maple and rosewood, two very expensive pieces of wood. Ultimately, though, it shouldn't really matter how much it costs. If you're playing a guitar and it feels good to you, you'll buy it no matter what the price is. OK, Michael in Sheffield wants to know, if you could only ever play one guitar again, what would it be? My Gibson ES335. OK, and finally, Luke in Chester says, your tickets always sell out when I try to buy them. What can I do? Uh, well, you can join my mailing list, which means you can have details mailed to you about where I'm going to be next. Also, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll be able to uh, see, see wherever I am all the time. So, okay, yeah. cool. right, do you want to sign our wall? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, sure. Awesome. There we go, just there. Awesome. Now that you're ready, do you want to get players yep, out? Absolutely. Thanks for joining us this week on Summer Scammers Festival Special. We hope we've given you some handy tips that you can take on holiday with you this summer. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Johnny. And just before you go, we've had a couple of tweets about the cosmetics, in particular the dry shampoo. Rue tweeted us saying it made her head really itchy, and Lucy tweeted saying it made her hair really white, which is not good for a festival. Hey, Rachel. Yeah. Hi, guys. OK, so let's have a recap of today's show. So you know what raincoat to bring. You know what cosmetics to avoid, but what food to take with you. You know what the best guitars are and where to buy your tickets from. Yep. And don't forget to join us next week on the final of our summer specials. Where we're going to be tackling more of your consumer calamities. Yep. But yeah. For now. But for now, we've got now. a very cute special acoustic performance from Finn Jackson. Yeah. 